Hello and welcome to episode 33 of Saab Fever. My name is Frank and in today's episode we're going to finish the Blue Saab project. The first step will be to plug it in where the CD changer should be. That's in the boot of the car on the left hand side. With that we go to the front, turn the ignition to on and press CD twice. That tells the radio that we want to listen to the CD changer. I'm now going to scan for Bluetooth devices on my phone. And I'm going to press 1 on the radio. That tells the blue Saab to switch into discoverable mode. I'm then going to try to connect to it. Uh, as a good example here, it's, it actually fails on my first attempt. Uh, this does happen a fair bit, actually. Uh, only when trying to pair, though. Once paired, they're fine. So if it does fail, just try again. It almost always works the second time. And there we go, we're now connected. I'm going to load up my music app. Press play. It's now playing. Uh, obviously, uh, for copyright reasons, I can't let you uh, hear it. I've just pressed skip on the um, steering wheel, and it worked. As one final test, though, I am going to uh, play with the balance, so... Let's go all the way to the left. Yep, I can still hear the music and all the way to the right and I can still hear it. Uh, it's just, just to make sure that both channels are coming through the speakers. And with that, back to the workbench. Well, I'd call that a successful test. So, I think now we just get it cleaned up bit of isopropyl alcohol and an old toothbrush get that flux cleaned off and after that we'll cut an opening in the box and I think we will be done so let's do that quickly dry for a bit. Well, we move on to the box. Uh, there's the four screws that come with it. They're really there for holding the lid down. As I pointed out in part one, we need to buy separate screws for the insides. Now, I really don't know. I, I really can't advise you on any measurements. I tend not to do any measurements when I'm making them other than to roughly sort of just scout out what you need um, because of the the way the connector in the car functions though um, it has tabs on either side that go over these notches here and then kind of lock in place afterwards so you do need to make the hole wider than this to give those tabs a chance to as I say sort of raise over this and then lock down for that you're going to need a Dremel or Dremel like device other brands are available have some sweets. All right, let's crack on. Yeah, that's relatively quick. Uh, the only issue I ever come across is because of the width of the little cutting disc. Now uh, you really can't do the sort of um, uh, which way? Which way is horizontal? No, horizontal is across the way, isn't it? Vertical. You can't re really can't do the vertical cutting very well. But I seem to have done quite well there. I'll just get a flathead screwdriver. Done quite well there, and just give it a. Gentle tap. There we go, I'm through. That one went quite well. Mm, that one looks a little big. I think I got carried away there on this one. A 
little bigger than it should be. But it has worked first time at least. So that's where the... no, no, not quite. That is where the blue sub will sit. And you can see there, I've gone a little wide on it. I really shouldn't have gone quite that far. But the height and everything is good. Um, one of the reasons, obviously, is because the way it comes in, obviously, you need to bring it in like this at an angle and then slide it in. You'll always end up with a bit of space at the top and the bottom. That's perfectly normal, but you probably don't want to go quite as wide as I did there. Here are my three little screws I'm going to use for fixing it in place. Just enough to hold it in place just now, just so I get them in in position. Ooh, lost it. No, lost it again. Ah, this works so much better not on camera. There. Where's the other one? Oh, got it, got it, it's fine. And the final one. Um, as I've said, um, I'm not sure, it probably doesn't matter, but I avoid it anyway. That one there, the heads of the screws, um, I think they might just touch the resistors there. And that may not have been clear, those resistors there. And just to avoid any kind of uh, doubt or issues, I don't ever use that one. We are almost done. And there we have it. One completed and fully functional Blue Sharp module. Um, if you've been following along with this little series, um, Hopefully this has helped you, or um, I really hope it has. Anyway, uh, we've gone through the ordering of components, the uh, manufacture of the board. We've assembled a board. We've tested it as we've gone, just to make sure that um, uh, all of our work is good as we're doing it. And in this final video now, we've tested it in the car as well. We've tested both channels just to make sure and quickly tested the steering wheel controls. Uh, to be honest, I mean, you don't really need to test the steering wheel controls, um, uh, the communication back and forth between the steering wheel to the Blue Sub module is entirely digital over the CAN bus. Um, if the device registers itself on the bus as being a CD changer, then it's going to work. The steering wheel controls will work because it's the same communication channels. Um, you do, because the audio uh, lines are separate and they are analog as well. You do need to test those. That's why um, Obviously crank the volume up to full on the device, but Afterwards pull that little tab and go left and right just to make sure you certainly are getting you know, left and right channels But there we are we're done it's completely working um, I hope you found this little series entertaining and informative and as always, thanks for watching.